There are uh, six traits that are considered vital for leadership. They are integrity, loyalty, commitment, energy, decisiveness, and selflessness. Cadet Greg Popovich. He learned all those lessons at the United States Air Force Academy, and using those traits served Pop extremely well. On his watch, not only did the San Antonio Spurs become a model franchise, but also a dynasty. And he and he would and also a dynasty. And he would become one of the most revered coaches in the history of the National Basketball Association, earning great respect from his fellow coaches, his players, peers, fans, and yes, the dean of sideline reporters too. Listening is important. Those are those little discipline things that are gonna win and lose us games. As the most tenured head coach in American professional sports, Greg Popovich has been a commanding presence on the NBA sidelines for more than a quarter century. Pop has given to the NBA a blueprint about how to run a franchise, about how to run a team, about how the game should be played. A graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy, Popovich spent eight years coaching at the collegiate level at Pomona Pitzer before becoming an NBA assistant to mentors Larry Brown and Don Nelson. Let's do it again. I don't see anybody sprint. In 1996, he took over the reins as head coach of the San Antonio Spurs and went on to write league history as his teams posted winning records for the next 22 years. He was a motivator. He pushed hard. I expected a lot from me, not only like on the court, but trying to teach me how to be a leader. And he cares for us, not only on a coaching level, but on a personal level. Keep shooting it, keep shooting it, follow through, follow through. He's beyond being a coach. He's more of a life coach, too. Generosity, charisma, humor, and we all appreciate him a lot. Under his leadership, the Spurs created a unique culture, which helped the franchise develop into a dynasty. The Spurs have captured their fifth NBA championship. I'm so proud of you guys, really happy for you. But uh, <laughs> we, we're going to practice some next week because I'll... Coach Pablo was so demanding and he was very competitive and he really wanted to win. And he definitely helped me grow as a man and as a basketball player. Popovich also led the United States to an Olympic gold medal. He's a three-time NBA Coach of the Year and holds the all-time NBA record for career victories. Greg Popovich is one of the most impactful people I've ever had in my life. Every coach in the league has watched Pop over the years, and he's just an inspiration for all of us. Welcoming Pop to the Hall of Fame are San Antonio's Fab Four, the Admiral, David Robinson, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker. You guys sit down. Don't speak, just sit there. I tried to think of a, a word that would describe what this might feel like, and it feels even shush. And it feels even different than I thought it would. Uh, but for me, it's unimaginable. And that's not an attempt to be humble. This is unimaginable. Uh, and for anybody that's uh, gone through this and felt it, uh, it's not something you think about as you're growing up. Uh, it's unimaginable. I. Uh, I 
I want to thank uh, Jerry Colangelo, John DeLeva, the Board of Governors, the trustees, and all those who voted uh, to make me part of, of this honor. Uh, as I look around and meet my colleagues with whom I share this dais tonight, uh, it's, it's a pretty crazy feeling uh, to be included in that. When I look out here, I'm looking at all these faces that are legends. Uh, I, I just, I'm not speechless, but I find it hard to find all the words to describe uh, what's, what's going on in my chest right now. Uh, all the pictures and the, the uh, artifacts in the Hall of Fame, uh, it's, it's a long way from growing up in Sunnyside in East Chicago, Indiana, and going under Klein Avenue to Franklin grade school where I shot my first basket. Because we all remember where we fell in love with this game. And for me, it was there uh, with that asphalt ground and that moon-shaped backboard. That kind of ages me, I guess. Uh, but uh, I can't remember if there was a net or if it was that iron mesh thing. Uh, but it went in and it was done. I was seduced. Uh, dribbling downtown East Chicago and going to the Catherine House to, to play ball or going to the Gary, Indiana Armory to practice with Biddy basketball for Doc James. All those days and nights out on the playground at 39th and Broadway and Gary or out at the Griffith Parks, those are the things that came back to me as I was thinking about standing here. And I know that everybody has their personal story, so I'll stop at that. But uh, it made me ask a question. What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> How could this happen? Uh, it's, it's hard to de describe. Because I'm a Division Three guy, you know. Guys like Coach Hickson are my idols. You know, those guys, that's, that's real basketball. Uh, I was going to wear my Pomona Pitzer shirt, but I thought Jerry would shoot me. Uh, so I didn't do that. Uh, I figured it out why I'm standing here. Uh, I have half a brain. It took me a few days, and I decided there were two reasons. One of them is a bit lengthy because it includes the thank yous that are appropriate, and the second one is really quick. Uh, but I want to thank uh, Coach Vermillion, uh, who would open the gym for me in Merrillville, Indiana, uh, when I'd come back from leave from the academy and so I could stay in shape. And he wasn't a basketball coach, he was a baseball coach, my chemistry and physics teacher. But uh, he had faith in me and uh, made me believe that I could play a little bit. Uh, moving on to the academy, I had the opportunity to play for Coach Bob Spear, who was an iconic uh, shuffle guy. I learned a lot of discipline. I didn't shoot very much. You took a shot about every one and a half to two minutes uh, in, the, in the shuffle, but uh, he was a great man and was followed by Another wonderful man named Hank Egan, who was a very underrated coach. He took over at the academy. I played for him on the junior varsity team. And uh, he gave me my first job at the prep school at the academy as a head coach. Also, this will be hard to believe, but when I got to the academy, I was a little bit of a wise ass. Uh, <laughs> and I know you all know that now I'm a totally mature, controlled individual. Uh, but he would boot me out of practice at least once every week and a half. Uh, just tell me to leave. And at the military academies, that's not a good thing for you. Uh, it causes a lot of trouble. But he was, he was special, and he deserves those thanks. Then things get crazy. Uh, this can't happen to anybody. Uh, but I guess it began when I actually was able to try out for the Nuggets. Uh, I was 26 years old, and Larry Brown and Doug Moe were the coaches. Uh, suffice to say that uh, when the camp was over, uh, Larry and Doug 
told me that it would be best if I got a coat and tie. Uh, and they had the vision. I know it was a tough decision for them, but they cut me and kept David Thompson. So uh, I, I knew pretty quickly that it was over uh, and started to, on, that, on that path. Coach Brown, uh, for some strange reason, when he went to San Antonio, he brought me along uh, while I was at Pitzer and Pomona, which is called Pomona Pitzer. People don't understand that, but it's two Division Three schools put together. Uh, wonderful Division Three program, and I was fat, dumb, and happy. Uh, I had a couple of assistants there, my first assistants in basketball, really. Uh, Charlie Katsifikas, a Tufts graduate from out east here, and Lee Wimberly, a Stanford grad who went to the Bolt School, law school at Berkeley. These two idiots accepted an offer from me for $1,000 per year. And Charlie, who's still the coach, so Coach Hickson can get after him for this, I also added to his contract, if he painted the dorms at Pomona and Pitzer, he'd get an extra stipend. And <laughs> these guys both took the job. So uh, I owe them a, a great deal, started me out, taught me a lot, and we had great camaraderie. Why Larry took me from there, I'll never know. Uh, I didn't help him very much, uh, but the odd part about it was that it was after a sabbatical year where this is the incredible part. I got to spend an entire season at both Kansas and North Carolina with Larry and Coach Smith. Uh, and Roy, thank you, where are you? Thank you for being so kind and supportive while I was there. Uh, we don't have to go through the details of where he put me and where I had to be, but uh, a whole year with those two guys, uh, that was like serendipity uh, times 10. And I'm very, very grateful uh, for that beginning. From there, uh, from those purists, those people, Coach Smith and Coach Brown, that would teach from morning till night, and if you were in a rocker step and you were an inch off, uh, they were on your butt. From there, I went to Nelly. That's a different world. Uh, and uh, speaking of Nelly, uh, he's in no danger out there in Hawaii for a couple of different reasons, but. Uh, Heart goes out to all the people out there that are suffering so much right now. Uh, it's a tough situation, for sure. Uh, he he uh, was the uh, master of gaming the system. Coach Riley knows that, right? He uh, knew what to do with matchups. Uh, he knew what the rules were, and he knew, knew how to use them. Uh, he was a great manipulator of the game. Uh, I can still, when I think of him, I can still think he had like three or four guys standing at half court and somebody going one-on-one -on -one over here back in the day. He was a little bit different in that regard, but I love him. He's a great guy. Uh, I've been blessed with great owners from the very beginning. Uh, Red McCombs, uh, an iconic figure, philanthropist, uh, great man brought the team to San Antonio and uh, was a great mentor for me. Uh, he's no longer with us, uh, but the influence he had on me was tremendous. Uh, then General Robert F. McDermott bought the team and kept it in San Antonio when everybody thought it was going to leave. Uh, David had a lot to do with it staying in San Antonio. Uh, so. Uh, And then, our, then the team was bought uh, by the Holt family, our current owners. Peter Holt and Juliana Hahn Holt uh, were fantastic, and they set the tone for our culture, uh, the demands, the standards that we're still trying to live by. Uh, at this point, uh, on a day-to-day -day operation, they've turned it over to their children, to Peter John Holt and his sister Corinna who uh, I'm very grateful for in the sense that they've been just as trusting as their parents. Uh, they allow us to do our jobs. 
Uh, we keep them informed, uh, but so far they've sent me no out-of-bounds plays or anything like that. Uh, I'm really indebted to them. Our fans have been great, just like in every city now, I think. What, what are you people doing here? Who invited you? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty large town, but it's a very small town atmosphere. And they think we belong to them. And, and we, we kind of like it because we feel responsible to them. So thank you all. We're going to continue to try to do our best. And I, thanks for sticking with me. I told you the first reason why I'm standing here to take a little bit of time. But number two is that quick. So don't worry about it. Um, special thank yous. Uh, USA Basketball. Uh, Jerry Colangelo uh, fulfilled a lifetime dream of mine uh, by having the trust in me uh, to coach the Olympic team in 2020 in Japan. And it wasn't easy. Uh, but it happened, and we won. And for him, uh, I'm a servant for the rest of my life. I'm very grateful to him. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Along with uh, Jerry, uh, there are a couple people that need to be mentioned. Sean Ford, uh, he's Jerry's right-hand man now. Grant Hill's right-hand man, since Grant Hill has taken over, uh, and he'll do a fantastic job. But Sean Ford, uh, for those that know him, this will make sense. For those that you don't, uh, you might be fortunate enough to run into him sometime. He can be the athletic director at any college. He can be the GM at any NBA team. He can be the damn president of the United States. He really could. He's that special, and he, he works that hard. He's. Uh, with the team right now. Uh, I think they played Slovenia today and in a prelim kind of deal. So Sean Ford uh, is important. Jim Tooley uh, is the bureaucratic guy. He's the guy that guides the whole thing uh, at some level, like behind closed doors that none of us ever see. Does a good job. And then lastly, as far as USA basketball is concerned, is a big thank you uh, to my friend, Coach K. Uh, he was so supportive. Uh, he, he brought me in early uh, to make sure that I got up to speed, knew what the heck was going on, uh, and through the whole thing has always been there for advice and counsel, and I appreciate him very much. Bump, bump, bump. All those players, there's just four of them, and there were a lot of times where they were a pain in the ass, too. Uh, <laughs> But there's a whole lot of them. Some of them are here tonight. But to all those players, uh, all the coaches that have been there, some of the, my fellow presenters here, uh, especially those that had a little bit of age on them like me, uh, we've seen a lot of players, a lot of assistant coaches, physio people. Uh, a huge thank you to all of you. I don't want to make the mistake and omit. Uh, but without them, uh, nothing, nothing would have happened. They, they had a little bit to do with it, but all those people, the work that they put in, uh, the loyalty, the support is beyond comprehension, and I'm very, very grateful to them. Uh, three people that have been with me from the beginning, from my first day until tonight, right now, there are only three in the whole uh, San Antonio organization. And the first one is a person who should be standing right here. And without him, there would have been much, much less success. And that's R.C. Buford. <laughs> P.J. is angry because I didn't say his name. 
Oh, I love you. Uh, the second one is Will Sevening, simply trainer of the century. And, and our PR director, b believe it or not, from then until now, Tom James. Who, he, had, he has the unenviable task of muzzling me uh, when I get on one of my soapbox deals here and there. Uh, he counsels me and tries to hold me back and tells me how much trouble I'm going to be in. Uh, but he, he's, a, he's a special guy. I have a family. I have a family. People think that I just do basketball. I don't really like it that much. I mean, you know what? what the basketball doesn't love us back, does it? We, we use it like a bar of soap, right? It pays our bills. It gives us a wonderful life. But I don't remember it saying, I love you, Pop. You know, it's, it's, it's different. It's the family that is the deal. And uh, my wife, Erin, of 42 years, uh, was our center of gravity. Uh, she was our rock and made everything worthwhile and meaningful. Uh, in her place now, my family has done a great job of keeping it going. Uh, my son Mickey is here, artist, musician from Seattle. And I was, I had a dream. I thought, there should, is there a chance there's a team in Seattle? Is, is there a history in Seattle that we're missing? Where's, where's Gary, Gary? Where's Gary? Am I right? Come on, man. Seattle. I'm probably in trouble. I don't know. I know. Uh, my daughter, Jill, who has taken over the mantle and keeps us all on the straight and narrow. Uh, she doesn't talk to me about trades as much as my wife did. Uh, but, you know, wives hate trades. You know, they make friends and everything. You say, I just tra traded Joe Blow. You're an idiot. Why would you do that? Those are great people. It's the business, you know. I don't care when I hear about your business. You know, these are people. Uh, that kind of thing. But, Jill, you're doing a great job. You and Mickey love you, love you to death. Her husband, Christopher, is here. Mr. Solid, never up, never down, just steady. Appreciate you. Megan, my sister-in-law, she keeps us all loose, takes care of us all whenever she's in town. And then the stars of the show, and I know all of you out there know who the stars of the show are. That's the grandkids. That's the grandkids. Bridget, stand up, Bridget. Stand up, stand up. Come on. There's Bridget. I, I don't think you can see Finn. Finn, where are you? Stand up. Raise your hand. Hey. Hey. Okay. okay. Is it the truth? You know, I, I tell my son and my daughter, I, 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 I love you. It's not that it's gone away, but... You guys are a little bit boring now. Is it, I, there's nothing else I can give you. You're on your own. Get out of here. Give me the kids. You know, that's what it's all about. So thank you for your patience, but that's the first reason why I'm standing here. The second reason involves one word, so it's going to be quick. That's great, huh? One word, and that word is duh. for this a long time. I'm not done. I didn't say duh was the end. I just said there's one word to describe why I'm here, and that's duh, those guys. Did you hear the little video where I said, listen? Listening is important. I was tasked with the job to try to create an environment so we could have some success. You know, people, you know, you've got some good players, you've got to do something. And I'm going to give myself credit. 
I did. You know what I did? I was there. I watched it all. I saw it, and I have pictures to prove that I was there while they won championships. And you can't take that away from me. I mean, I, I talked to David. David, he was, he was good. I, 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 you know, Coach Blair mentioned the word relationships, and I'm going to get to that because that's what's important. All those O's and X's, everybody knows the O's and X's. It's not brain science. Like, you know, when's the last time you had a new pick and roll play? It's all the same damn stuff. You know, Jerry Sloan ran the same play 77 times in a row, and nobody could beat Carl and John. You know, so it's, that's all baloney. It's about relationships. And with David, it was, okay, I curse. <laughs> I don't want to curse. I know it's ignorant, but you got to be who you are because Kids, hold your ears, because players have great bullshit antennae. <laughs> and if you're not genuine, they know it in a second. Just be yourself. You can't be Johnny Wooden or Bobby Knight or whoever. You can't do it. You just have to be yourself. So I made a deal with David, and he said, Pop, as long as you don't take the name of the Lord in vain, I'm going to try to put up with you. <laughs> and I want to thank you for doing that, because it, it worked. It worked. With Tony, <laughs> I just asked him to be perfect. Uh, and at 19, that was tough. If you could switch the social, you know, situations that we have now compared to back then. If I coached him now the way I did then, I would be in handcuffs. Uh, <laughs> seriously, I would be behind bars, don't you think, Tony? <laughs> but I have mellowed, right? He tells me I'm soft now. So. I can't go back to those days. You got to change. You got to change. Uh, Timmy, uh, with Timmy, the relationship was I just wanted him once in a while to listen to what I said or just nod his head <laughs> so that I knew that he heard me. I just wanted some self satisfaction. I wanted to feel good about myself. I wanted to think that I was really coaching this team. And once in a while, he acquiesced and he'd give me a nod. And I'm thankful for that. I really am. <laughs> See, this, just like that. It's like, uh, that's what he does. Relationships. Manu. Whew. Uh, like, I think Tony said it took two years for us to figure it out. It wasn't, was it that long? Was it? <laughs> but what I learned from Manu, once he came to me one day, he says, you know, I'm moaning and groaning at him. And, Bob, I am Manu. This is what I do. It's a true story, quote, unquote. And at that point, I learned how to zip it and just let him play. Uh, and sometimes that's the best thing we can do as coaches is just let him play. So uh, my final message is just the wins and losses are all crap. The highs and lows are all crap. That's illusory. It's, it's, it doesn't really exist. What exists is seeing these guys and their kids those relationships with your assistant coaches, everybody else you're with, your colleagues, your friends, because that's what you take with you as you move along. All those wins or losses, they fade away. They fade away. But those relationships stick with you forever, and that's where the self-esteem and the self-satisfaction comes. And we live in challenging times. I'm not going to go into it. Uh, but the times we live in require, they require that we relate with each other a whole lot better than we do right now. So I wish you all well. Thank you.